So hello again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today I've got Sarah, who is uh, the head teacher of uh, Summerswood Primary School, which is located in Borehamwood in Hertfordshire. So uh, first of all, Sarah, how are you today? Do you know what? Today is a good day. It's good. a day where I'm at work with lots of lovely people, which makes me smile. And I know I'm very lucky to be able to see people. So that's why my smile might be a little bit larger than other people's today. That's amazing. That's great. And I can, you know, I'm going to say already I can see you're in very good spirits, which is which is which is brilliant. A breath of fresh air in these turbulent times. So for those of you watching or listening in the future, we are beginning week five in, in lockdown, I believe. About there. I think last week was the end of week four. I think we're week six. We might even be week six. How crazy is that? Look, time flies when you are. <laughs> having fun as it were so tell us a little bit about the uh, about school at the moment then so I assume you're open we are open so we usually have about 400 children here um, but at the moment we've got about 16 we range between 10 and 20 children each day yep. and out of those 20 children 15 so or so are key worker families um, we, we're you know, lucky to be able to support them. The children that come in are sensational. So we're, we're lucky that, that they're here and enjoying life at school. Um, but school life is very different. We're, we're in a couple of rooms rather than using the whole school. Mm -hmm. We've got families together. So we've got children from the age of 10 down to the age of three, um, all in the room together, trying to do learning, having fun, all of those sorts of things, which can be a challenge. Um, I've currently got three staff in school, two mm -hmm. teachers and a teaching assistant who supports our first aid. Um, and you, you might hear them in the background. They're just about to, to go and have their lunch. So there may be some noises in the no, background. Good. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> it's great to hear. Every now, and likewise, every now and then you're going to hear my two sproglings running around my garden, causing havoc. Um, <laughs> for those of you that can't see my, uh, my setup here, I'm, I'm pretty much effectively just got a big sofa and I'm looking out of my office garden, aka my man cave, uh, looking at the world uh, slowly being just, yeah, smashed to pieces by my two beautiful kids. Um, so what's the, what's the kind of, how did the kids come in? Do they have to wear any clo like certain clothing or anything like that? Or the, the rules that we've got are that they have to wear fresh clothes every day. Uh -huh. So that is one of our rules. They can't be wearing the same clothes. We check their temperature as they come in. Um, we have as much social distancing as we can, but you know, when you're three, there's only so much social distancing you can have from a grown up. So we check their temperature, um, and that's it really. We have got a limited amount of PPE equipment in school that has been given to us by Hertfordshire. So we've got some face masks, some gloves, some aprons. Um, that's about it. We uh -huh. don't really want to use it because we don't want to scare the children you know no. the, the children the adults they're not usually with they're not with their usual teacher all the time so we want to make ourselves as friendly and um, available to them as possible and having a mask on is not the easiest way to do that with little children no yeah i can imagine yeah well there's a comedy sketch waiting to happen that really isn't it uh, a bit like chinese whispers during the uh through, <laughs> through a face mask um Okay, so I can imagine that there must have been an element of excitement there as well. I, you know, the kids must be thinking this is all, well, definitely the youngsters thinking it's a bit of a game. Um, what, what kind of feedback are you also getting from parents whose kids are not at school? Is, is there like an element of, of worry or what's that like? We're, we're doing our best to keep in touch with our families, but with 400 people, 400 yeah. families, it's a challenge. And every day in school, we worry about not engaging with our families well, and that continues now. So we've got some families that are in constant contact. Um, I use our Summerswood Facebook page to engage with families, so they get to see this face quite a lot every day. Just a quick good morning, giving them a challenge, setting the children some work to do. A lot of them are grateful that they don't have to be at school because they've got their own families that they're concerned about. Yeah. Others are getting to a point where their children aren't doing any work and they're worried about that. And, and our, our message is, it doesn't matter. The most important thing at the moment is 
that you're happy and safe. And if being happy involves sitting on the couch in pajamas watching movies, fantastic. You go ahead and do that because we can catch up on learning later. Right now, we need to make sure we're safe. And being out of school is doing that. So whatever you're doing at home is brilliant. Keep on doing that. Brilliant. No, I, I, I absolutely love that message. And um, I think it is very important for the parents just to kind of give themselves probably a bit of a break at the moment and just say, look, you know, you're doing your best. So that's fine. The best, you know, as long as you try and you're doing something and you're just being happy, I suppose, then you're right. And I love that message. And, you know, I know that me and my wife are kind of beating ourselves up a bit because we, we're, we're still teaching. We are still teaching. I say we, it's mostly my, my wife, but we weren't, we weren't getting as productive and we weren't being as productive as we, as we hoped we were going to be. Uh, and, you know, we kind of sat there and asked Madeline, my oldest, how are you feeling at the moment? She said, yeah, I'm fine. And I can do this now. I can do this now. So when we actually asked her, she said she completely put our minds at rest. Um, and I think we do just a couple of hours a day um, as well as learning in the garden and stuff. But we're not taking it as seriously as we did in the first couple of days. So. Yeah. Um, I think you know. I think that message is quite strong. So for you, um, as you were saying earlier as well, personally, you've uh, you've had an interesting year. I have had a very interesting year. Life has changed completely for me. Uh, ultimately, yes, I'm I'm not the same person today as I was even just five months ago. Um, four months ago, in fact, it's just a few days over four months ago. Um, I went from being a very happy single uh, 40 year old very happy um and I, I became a special guardian to a nine-year-old girl who didn't have a family to live with forever and i was in a position that i have a spare room where i live and i have uh, the love to give uh, somebody and after going through quite some lengthy court processes and um, lots of assessments by social workers, I had a beautiful nine-year-old move in with me on the 20th of December. Yeah, I mean, that is extremely touching and very, very special. Um, so, yeah, I mean, your level of, of adapting has, uh, has definitely been tested. <laughs> very much so. Yes. <laughs> Do you know what? If anything, it's been helpful. Because before that time, I was Sarah the head teacher. Now I'm Sarah the head teacher who's also a parent. And that's a whole different view for me. I haven't had that before. And I've had to fit into that role quite quickly. And I hear things and I see things differently. And I think, as a parent, is that what I want from school? Whereas before, I, I didn't have to think about that. I was just thinking about what was right for the children. What did I think? Um, in my role as head was right and now I think of it from a different perspective as well oh yeah yeah I can definitely imagine that and, and seeing it as well I mean you're going to be getting a more honest um, view from your new daughter yeah. who's going to be who's going to be telling you all sorts <laughs> I mean uh, my my two are five and five going on 15 and, and uh, two going on three. Um, and uh, the amount of honesty you'll get is probably is more than you, more than you need sometimes, but they tell you everything. They're, they're an open book a lot of the time, which is fantastic. And I think that definitely you're going to learn a lot more from the kids in your school now than you ever have done probably just from going yeah. home. Yes, definitely. <laughs> I definitely hear a lot more, but I also hear how it is from her perspective now. So when I'm um, putting out daily activities for the children, I'm thinking, do you know what? This is week four. This is week five. This is week six. They're tired. Let's do an easy activity today. Let's not make them do something really physically active. Let's just have a nice calm activity because I can feel how exhausted we are. So I can only imagine how other families are feeling, even though we're just at home there's mm. so much you know brain activity that's going on to keep us going so having that view of things you know is really helpful well it's, it's people are saying oh it's 
it's hard. I don't think it's hard. I think it's impossible. <laughs> um, it is so <laughs> difficult. But at the same time, it is so lovely. As a parent, you know, I do get to escape. I do get to run off and on. Technically at work, I'm behind a, a different door, um, even though I can still see them. I do have that to my advantage. So I am spoiled, if, if you like, when it comes to that. But at the same time, I, I, it is so difficult. I think that what you said earlier is probably one of the biggest take-homes from this and to hear it from, from yourself. And that's just to, you know, step back a bit, you know, give yourself a bit of a break and just make sure that happiness is the main focus. You know, that, that is such a, a reassuring thing to be told as a parent, such a reassuring thing as a parent. I think we, we need to remember that our brains are still developing, even as adults, our brains are still growing, but our children's brains are still growing. And the important thing we want them to know about when difficult times come, which this is a difficult time, there is always a way through and we can find a positive way through with our families. Um, and this could be really taxing for a lot of children moving forward, coming back to school, being away from their family when they've just spent six weeks at least, if not more by the time we get there, with that one family and well, how do I know who I can trust anymore? And it's being happy and healthy and confident when we're at home is, is the most important thing. As I said earlier, we can catch up on the maths bit that we've missed, the history stuff that we haven't caught up with. We've got years to do that. We can't catch up with our brains. Our brains need us right now to be focusing on feeling good and feeling okay because sometimes we don't feel good there are some days where you know it's really tough and the kids just want to see their friends I just want to see my family and my friends but mm. we can't and it's okay that we can't because we're the same as everybody else it's not that we're doing anything different and just having that reminder as well that everybody's going through the same thing they're all in the same position and we just need to think about ourselves and our well-being not just our our academic brain but our well-being brain as well yeah no, yeah that's 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 quite a poignant message that uh, i think that that's what people do need to focus through these times and anyone looking back on this from the future i hope that you do look back at this time yeah okay it was scary and yeah it was it was hard but i hope there are happy memories that are being made now more importantly um because we never and <laughs> I repeat this all the time, we're never going to get this opportunity again. Um, times are going to be really tough after this as well. When we go back from a business standpoint or from a work standpoint, you know, there are going to be high levels of, of businesses going bust and, and potentially people being unemployed. So for now, I think people just need to have a little think about, be mindful of the future, but really do enjoy the time that you do have with everyone right now. Um, I mean, moving into when this is kind of all over, this isn't going to be over for a long time as we know it. So do you think there's going to be like a split going back to school? Maybe, I mean, I don't know what you can and can't say, but they're probably just trying to reinvent schooling right now in some think tank somewhere. Absolutely. I think the, the biggest message is, you know, I have lots of parents saying, well, what do you know? What, what have you heard? And I think it's important that everyone knows we don't know anything. We know when the Prime Minister speaks, that's when we find out what's going to happen next. There's no secret news line that's making its way towards us. So we're listening as you are and making it up as we go along. I was just outside on the playground with my deputy head having the conversation about, well, if they ask us to come back to school, how would we do it? Because the other thing is, we're not being told how to do anything. We're making it up ourselves. And we're doing a really good job across the country. We're doing a great job. But we're not being told, right, the children will come back on this day and you will have this many children. We'll be told that social distancing still needs to happen. And with 400 children in school, we need to work out a way to do that. Uh, I don't know what it is yet. <laughs> I don't know what that way is yet. It's like a sports hall. You need a sports hall for every class. Well, at the moment, with our 18 children in school, that's too many for one teacher. 
because we have them in our school hall, which isn't the largest room, but you know, it's a big enough space to fit at least 200 children in for an assembly. And at the moment it's too small for 18 children because they need their space um, to be able to, to move around. So that's why I've got an extra teacher in so that we have one lot in a classroom, a big classroom, and the other lot in the halls so they were in groups of 10 rather in, than in those bigger groups. So having 10 to 15 children in a classroom, we could probably just about manage, but we'd have to plan when they go to the toilet and we'd have to plan when they go up and down the corridors and when they have their lunch time and where they have their lunch time. There's a lot to think about. Planning thought about <laughs> corridor. Yeah. Something as simple as getting from classroom to classroom is actually impossible. It would be impossible, absolutely. Wow. No, that's, <laughs> that is mind-blowing. That is mind-blowing. And, yeah. Wow, what did you do with that? So, yeah, I mean, there is a whole host of things that need to be, problems that need to be solved. I'm sure there are people out there that can come up with something, but it's, uh, it's beyond beyond me <laughs> beyond me. there is a way there is a way there's always a way forward we'll find something we'll find a route and you know whatever we need to do we'll do it's just the unknown is the difficult bit mm -hmm. it's the will we be back in two weeks will we be back in four weeks well you know that it's the unknown part that's difficult because as soon as we do know we go into action plan and start getting everything organized but for now, we just need to focus on home learning and looking after the children that are in school. Other than that, we just have to keep those other thoughts in the back of our mind about what we could possibly be doing, what we could possibly be preparing for. Yeah. OK. Yeah, yeah. No. I think that. And the mad thing is, at any one given time, you're going to be given probably not a lot of notice. You're going to be given like a week, two week tops, maybe. Um, I think, well, in full lockdown, they gave us a few days. I was told yeah. to, sh to shut my gym. I was given um, no notice. I, I was given four, three, uh, five hours. Yeah. In five hours' time, you shut. <laughs> so I think the opposite is going to happen like that. I think the opposite is going to happen like that. I think they'll be like, oh, well, yeah, next week's fine. And everyone will be like, what? Um, because that's the speed of everything that's happening, isn't it? So. That's but for, for me and for other head teachers, we do have power over that. If we're not ready, we're not opening. If I can't yeah, keep good. your children safe, I'm not opening until I'm ready. So you can tell me to open at whichever time it is, but if we're <laughs> not ready, that's not going to happen. We'll do our best because we want our children back. We miss them so much. I know that parents are sitting at home thinking, oh, I wish school was open. But as teachers, as staff, you know, being at school with hardly any children it's you know we're really sad we are sad we miss them we miss talking to them engaging with them and doing what we do best which is having a lot of fun whilst learning we miss it a lot we do so we'll be doing our best to get back to it as swiftly as possible while still keeping that safety brain you know fully in mode yeah i think you have to as well okay so i mean we're going to come into a bit of a roundup now i think you know you've given some fantastic advice you've um, you've told us a little bit about your side of things as well which is which is really really great and for anyone looking back at this it's going to be so helpful if you were to give yourself now knowing what you know and i ask everyone there a little bit of advice so you could go back to the beginning of lockdown you can kind of grab yourself by the shoulders and go sarah don't do so much of this and do more of that what would those things be what would you tell yourself me personally, sort of coming out of the head teacher zone, sort of, is I've got to be kinder to myself because I'm not very kind to myself. I'm always thinking about the next thing. I wake up in the middle of the night thinking, oh, I haven't done that. I need to think about that. Everything's okay. I think that's the message I need to remember as well. Be kind to yourself and remember that everything is going to be okay. Things might be up in the air and upside down and backwards, but we as people, we as human beings, even separated, we still come together and make good things happen. Mm. And kindness has been top of my list of things, you know, with the children. I've said to their families, 
if they get nothing else done, they will learn that being kind is one of the most important traits that they will keep with them forever from this time apart. That being sending notes in the post to, to family members, sending little video messages, being kind is, is all that it's all about. So just remember how important kindness is in difficult times. I absolutely love that. Uh, I think, you know what, I, I couldn't add anything to that. I couldn't add anything to that. So thank you so much for today, Sarah. Honestly, that has been, has been amazing. And, you know, some of your personal stories as well um, have blown my mind a bit, which is absolutely lovely to hear. So lovely to hear. Um, so anybody that kind of is worrying or things to do, we're going to, I'm going to um, ask Sarah after this if there's any, um, anywhere that we can get some resources to you guys as parents um, and we'll put those in the show notes below. Um, anyone else as well, if this has kind of resonated, is, if, this is, um, if this has touched home a bit, please do press that share button and just comment below um, because we'd love to hear from you. And also if you do feel like you do have a story to tell and you'd like to get in contact with me uh, and be in one of these uh, little interviews, please do that by just commenting below. Uh, or get in touch via our uh, Facebook page. Um, and apart from that, guys, Sarah, don't go anywhere because I'm going to carry on talking to you. But for you guys, I'm going to press that stop button. So thank you for either listening or watching, depending on what platform you're on. And we'll see you soon.